Hello and welcome to part 1 of Blender 2.6, The Basics. In this 15 part video series, I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know to make a short animated movie using Blender. Blender is a free and open source 3D modeling and animation program that you can get from www.blender.org. Blender is available for Mac, Windows, Linux, and even FreeBSD. And the most current version is Blender 2.67b as of this recording date. If you're using a newer version of Blender, everything I teach you in these next 15 videos is going to be totally applicable and most likely identical to what I'm showing you on the screen now. So the first thing you do is install Blender and open it up. The first thing you're going to see uh, once it gets all loaded is a splash screen. And if you see a different picture, that's okay. It just means you have a newer or different version. To get rid of the splash screen, you just have to click on the picture and it goes away and you see Blender's interface. Now when I first downloaded and installed Blender years ago and I opened up the program, I had already been doing 3D for several years using 3D Studio Max, a different program, and I saw Blender and I pretty much closed it right away because it seemed really confusing. If you're in that same boat, don't worry, I'm going to be introducing you to everything in Blender over, over these next videos that you'll need to understand at least the basics of Blender, uh, so don't be frightened, just follow along. The first thing you're going to see in the middle of your screen is this big dark gray area, and this is where your 3D world exists. This is called your 3D viewport, or your 3D window, and this is your window in which you're going to look at your 3D scene, or your 3D objects, or your animations. The first thing we have to talk about in this video, or the first things we have to talk about, are how to view your scene, in other words, how to change your views, zoom in and out, look at different sides of your object, how to move objects and select objects, and rotate objects, and scale objects, um, and I think that's pretty much it for this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, what you need to follow along in this video is Blender, of course, installed, and you also need a mouse. Now, the most common question I get from video users or commentators on YouTube is, can I use Blender with a trackpad on a laptop? And the sad and short answer is, really, no, you can't. You need a mouse. A mouse is much better for navigating and viewing in 3D and really doing any higher-end art on a computer because it gives you much greater control. And with a mouse, it comes with two buttons and, and most importantly for Blender, a scroll wheel that also acts like a button. I actually went to Amazon.com, this is the American site, and found some really great cheap mice. I recommend a Logitech wired optical or laser mouse that has a wheel in the middle of it. A little nub isn't very good, but um, these mice are really cheap, um, and you can probably go to any local computer store and ask just for their most basic optical wired wheel mouse, and they'll find you one, hopefully. So getting back to Blender, the way that you zoom in and out on your, or in your scene is you have to have your mouse cursor in this 3D viewport area and you scroll up on your mouse wheel and it'll zoom in and in most cases it'll let you zoom all the way actually into the middle of your cube or the middle of whatever object you have and if I scroll down I'm zooming out. Now be careful not to go too far because you can actually lose and stop being able to see your scene and that's bad. You can get lost pretty easily in 3D space. So always kind of stay within the range where you can see everything in your scene. The next thing you have to learn how to do is orbit your scene. And this is really where a mouse is important. Orbiting is letting allowing you to change your view to look at other sides of any object in your world. And the way that you orbit is you can push your mouse wheel down like a button and then move your mouse in the 3D viewport. So I'm going to push my mouse wheel down like a button and then hold it down and move my mouse and this is called orbiting. And I can even orbit by dragging side to side with that middle mouse wheel button pushed down or I can keep holding it down and move it up and down too and that lets me see any side, top or bottom of my object and of course I can be doing this when I'm really zoomed in or I can be doing it when I'm really zoomed out either way works so this is called orbiting the third way that you can change the view in your scene with your mouse and this time you're going to add your keyboard in as well if you ever played a 3d first person shooter um, you'll know what strafing is strafing or in 3d it's called panning lets you look side to side um, like stepping side to side, or up and down in, in Blender. The way you, you pan is you hold shift down on your keyboard 
and you orbit. So I'm going to hold shift and then hold shift and push my mouse wheel down and then drag around and I can pan side to side or even up and down and that lets me see things around the object that I'm looking at. So again zooming in and out, scrolling up and down, orbiting is pushing your mouse wheel down like a button and dragging your mouse and panning is with your shift key and orbiting with your middle mouse button. All right, those are the basics. Practice those until they feel really comfortable, until you are, feel comfortable looking around at any side of your object. Um, I'm gonna be showing you how to change the way that your that Blender um, orbits a little bit in the next video to make it a little bit easier, um, but get used to it, get used to zooming in and out. The next thing I have to show you is how to select objects. And this is really easy, although not always the most intuitive. The way you select objects in Blender is you right click on them. So right now I have the cube selected and I can tell that because it has an orangey yellow outline around it. Um, if I right click on the lamp, it becomes outlined or highlighted in orangey yellow. And I'll right click on the camera, it becomes highlighted in orange yellow. And so I can keep on selecting whatever I want. If I've got lots of objects in my scene, I can select any of them by right clicking and it becomes selected. You're also going to notice that when you have an object selected, it has these arrows sticking out of it. These arrows is, are called the gizmo, and it's one of the most important tools in any 3D program, pretty much any 3D program, um, that let you move, rotate, or scale an object. Right now, we have the gizmo, which is called, or this version of the gizmo is called the move gizmo, and it lets me move my object in any of the three axes of our world. There are three axes in any 3D world or any 3D program. Just like in math class in high school, we have the X axis, which is this red axis, and I'm dragging the end of my arrow to move my cube on that X axis. I have the Y axis, which is the green, and it's kind of front and back. You might as well consider the X axis side to side and the Y axis front and back. And then the new one is, of course, the Z or Z axis, which is up and down. And so you can use the the move gizmo to move your cube uh, on any of the three axes, one axis at a time. You're going to notice that if you drag, click and drag in this middle white circle, you can drag your cube around more easily, but I actually don't recommend this because you're actually not moving your cube very accurately like this. You think that if you grab in this white circle and move your cube up and down, it's moving your cube straight up and down, but actually it's not. It's actually moving farther away. Um, when you drag it up, because I'm looking at my scene from a top angular view down. Um, and so always use these handles, and so you'll know exactly where your cube is. And you can change your view after you move it, so you can really tell where it is. I'm going to hit Control or Command Z, or Z a few times to go back to my first position. There we go. And so this is the move gizmo. But down at the bottom of your 3D viewport, you have an, a header bar, even though it's not at the top, it's called the header bar. And these are your three options or three types of gizmos. We're on our move gizmo right now, the arrows. If I switch over to the rotate gizmo, my whole gizmo changes, and this is how I can rotate my cube in any of the three axes. Right now, I'm grab, I grab the red handle, and so I can rotate my cube only as if a pole was going through the cube on that X axis. I'm going to hit Control z a few times. I can grab just the Y hula hoop or the blue hula hoop for the Z or Z axis. And if I grab in this white circle again, it rotates it in a random way, so I would not recommend doing it that way at all. And the third kind of gizmo is your scale gizmo. And again, you can grab it in the middle, but that becomes unpredictable. Um, you can scale it all at once, but I'll show you a better way of doing that pretty shortly but you can grab your cube in any one direction and make it bigger or smaller. Of course, you can make it flat like a pancake or like a square stick, uh, but I'll press Command Z a few times to undo, undo, undo. All right, next thing is views. Right now we're looking at our scene from any random view that we want to look at our scene from. And of course, I'm just orbiting around to change my view. And this is called your user perspective. Um, user perspective view is whatever view that you, the user, chooses to look at your scene from. The perspective part of this scene is, um, or my view, means that when I look at my scene, I'm looking at it from a perspective, a certain spot. And from that spot, certain objects look bigger if they're closer to me and farther away. Let's say I grab this cube and I move it farther away it gets smaller as I move it farther away, and it'll actually clip off and disappear if I move it too far away. Um, 
And that's great. That's the way that we see things in the real world. Things are closer, they're bigger. If they're farther away, they're smaller. But if you ever play a game like The Sims or SimCity or Warcraft, you'll know that things in those games don't get smaller as they get farther away. And that kind of view is the opposite of perspective. It's called orthographic, which doesn't actually exist in real life, but they have it in 3D programs for good reason. If I go down to the view menu, I can change between perspective and orthographic right here, which is also the number five on your number pad. That's if you have a larger keyboard with that side section of numbers and plus and minus and times and enter and things like that. If you have a smaller keyboard, like a smaller laptop or one of the new wireless Macintosh uh, keyboards, you won't have this. I'll show you how to make your number row like that in the, in the next video. But for now, you can use it from here. Um, if I click on this, you're going to see my whole scene change. So I'm going to click and you saw my scene get a whole lot flatter looking. I'm going to press five and that'll toggle it back and forth, five on my number pad. Um, you'll see that that is perspective. You can see it says perspective up there. If I press five again, you're going to see it change to ortho, but I'm going to toggle back and forth. So this is perspective. It makes everything look 3D and it makes everything look like it's jumping out at you a little bit more. But if I press five again, you'll see it change to orthographic. And orthographic is actually better for modeling 3D objects and it's better for looking at your 3D scene through because orthographic lets you look at things exactly from any side uh, without things looking distorted because perspective actually is a little bit, it can make things look distorted on your screen. So I would stick to orthographic. And the benefit of using orthographic, besides it making things look simpler, is you can change to your front, side, top, left, right views, and things will look, you can look at things straight on. And that's a really good thing in 3D. So I'm gonna go down to my view menu while we're in orthographic, and I'm gonna change my view to the front view. Front view means I'm looking at things straight on from the front, and you can see I can still move things up and down, left and right, but I cannot move things forward and backward, and that's okay. The keyboard shortcut, in case you're wondering, for the front view is the one key on my number pad. I know that because if I go to view and front, it says numpad one. If I press three on my numpad, or I go to the menu and I select view right, it changes my view to the right view. So three is right and seven is top. So again, I can change any of these views from this menu, but I like using keyboard shortcuts. Blender is very keyboard shortcut based. So you're gonna have to get used to using these keyboard shortcuts. I use them all the time in my videos. Um, the way that you, or the reason why you wanna use these views is because it's really best to move and transform objects from these views because you can really see where you're moving things from. If I go to my front view and I wanna move things left and right, I wanna look at things straight on from front orthographic so I can really see if I'm moving it left and right. If I have front persp, it's a little bit more distorted. Things will get bigger and kind of stick out at me in weird ways. So orthographic really is best. Now there are keyboard shortcuts to move and rotate and scale things as well. If I'm looking at my scene from a front or side or top view. Uh, if I press G, I can grab my object. G is for move or really grab. And so if I just press G and let go, it, the object is now stuck to my mouse. And I, if, I, if I left click, it'll let go. If I press G again, even though my mouse is not over top of the object, it will still grab and I can click to let go. That's great. If I press R, that means rotate. And when I rotate from a view, like the front orthographic view, it will rotate perpendicular to my view. In other words, it's rotating not towards or away from me, but side to side. In other words, perpendicular to my view. The last thing I can do, I'm going to press Command or Control Z a few times. If I press S from one of these views, it will let me scale uniformly. And that's a really powerful thing. Scaling uniformly means that it's making the, the same cube just bigger or just smaller, but it's the same cube, not stretched at all, bigger or smaller. You'll remember that if I went back to the scale gizmo, I can scale easily in one direction, and that's really powerful too. But if I want to scale the cube uniformly, I can press S and it'll let me scale all three axes the same amount. So I can make it bigger or smaller. Now when you're using S, it's kind of important that you don't put your mouse right over the middle of the object because that makes it very hard to make it 
bigger or smaller or control it as you're making it smaller. So you kind of want to put your mouse somewhere between the edge of the 3D viewport and the middle of your object. So I'm going to keep on scaling. There we go. Um, I, of course, I can use 1, 3, and 7, change my view. So I've thrown a lot at you in this video. Um, practice it all. Make sure you feel comfortable orbiting, zooming, panning, changing between the three types of gizmos. And in the next video, I'm going to explain the user interface a little bit better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.